This is Short Hammer. It is the 7th of December 2020. And this is Trading Zones. We're taking a peek at the MES. Now, I pray for everyone had a wonderful uh, weekend. My weekend was super long, but my Cleveland Browns are 10 and 3. Are they 9 and 3? Or are they 10 and 3? Maybe they're 9. And, no, they're 10 and 3, I think. But either way, winning season, we don't suck today. So, um, looking at the MES, and as you can see, I don't have lines drawn for these uh, all-time highs and these new levels. We'll see where it goes. I'll probably be um, utilizing pivots to trade because now it's above my retracement levels. So for me, I'll use pivots and I may draw some uh, some temp lines on this, see how they, see if we get retracements or if this continues to break to the upside. But the the news on the on the futures, right? S and P is is this. This is what you have to um, to uh, to. This is sort of like an anchor, right? So job numbers weren't were, were pretty bad, but. What you have to remember is now we're back to that bad news is good news because the worse the news, the better uh, the market thinks, the greater the chances that we're going to have a stimulus package or multiple stimulus packages. So stimulus packages are good for the market. Market pushes up. So that is, you know, one of the reasons why this market is squeezing up, even though we're um, seeing COVID cases go up, receiving bad news here and there. Um, it's because the market is now sort of trying to uh, factor in or bake in um, a stimulus package. We'll see how that shakes out. But for me, um, I will be watching to see if we retrace or we continue to break to the upside. And because we're above uh, some of the retracement levels that I like to use or that I've used in the past, I will be utilizing um, at least as pivots, right, to to trade these these all time high levels. So that's what I'm watching here. If we continue to break to the upside, we can go you know, 37, 25, 37, 50. We can, we can continue to go. They're going to continue to juice this thing because you never know. Um, in just traders, two things to think about, and I'm not going to be super long-winded on this. One of the things that you notice near the end of the year is that some funds are behind on the returns that they promised their investors, right? And if you don't meet your returns for, you know, for your investors, they can take their, you know, request, take their money back. So it's almost like all or nothing, because you want to hit those those numbers because you want them to keep giving you more money. So um, any momentum tickers, keep an eye on them because you may see those things really, really rip as money just pours in, as people try or funds try to um, to make up for whatever numbers they uh, they promise to hit on the year. So that could be interesting. That's something to watch for. But watching these futures, financials have been strong, even though tech was, you know, a little bit weak um, this past week. Financials have been strong. So keep an eye on the financials. We'll see how far they can go. But definitely um, just be careful because, yes, can we run? and you know really make some headway into 3750s maybe even 38s or higher it's possible but this squeeze is insane so just be just be careful being um either trying to guess the top or thinking that the top is never going to come just follow the trend Same thing, the Russell, ripping and running, been bullish for quite some time, and we're squeezing to the upside. For me, I am 
not going to be in because this is ludicrous. So we'll see how much uh, if we keep running to the upside, if this, if this keeps squeezing. Um, I will play pullbacks as long as I see buyers step in to previous levels. If it continues to squeeze, I'll be not be playing the uh, I won't be playing the Russell, but 1863 is a level. 1829, 1815, the previous levels. This is just super bullish. So we'll say, see if this continues. But follow the trend. You know, if you are going to, if you're used to paying, playing like, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 contracts, you may want to lighten that. Just don't go too heavy just because we're at some 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 pretty uh, air popping, eye popping numbers on the futures. So just be careful if you're playing futures or if you're playing um, financials, just be careful uh, when you get up there that you're not left holding the bag, right? Musical chair sometimes. So looking at Amazon, Amazon had an interesting week. And um, this was a great ticker for us this past week. We played it up, we played it down, just, it was just wonderful. So the thing to know for Amazon, you can ignore my, my lines. The line that we were watching for on the week was 32, this 32, uh, 20 ish area, right? We wanted to say, Hey, if we broke above that and we were bullish above that, then we're going to be watching the 32, 68, the 33, 44, the 33, 70 we thought we could run. But as you can see, we did not stay bullish above that we don't see bullish candlestick uh structure above this level what does bullish candlestick structure mean so what that means is if you look here right let's say hey i'm if we're bullish above 3220 if i said that here look at this bullish candles up 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 look at that that's what i would want to see if we broke above here and we were bullish and even if it wasn't this sharp I want to see continued progress to the upside, right? Each consecutive each consecutive day, um, we're seeing a higher a higher close, right, on the candles. We didn't see that, um, and so right now we're back. We pull back to the thirty one fifty nine area, which is an interesting area because that's an area where we saw a. Uh, we sort of called a called called a called a bid right where buyers stepped in in uh, previous days right so we saw the back test of that on the first of uh, December and we're back there now or we're back there at the close of the week right so what we back tested early in the week we're back there and so the question is will the buyers step in and bounce us off thirty one fifties if you look across you'll see that there is candle structure. If you're looking back from the 10th of November all the way through here, the 16th of November, there's candle structure, even going back here, um, the 29th of October, there's candle structure along this, uh, this 31, 42 ish area, right? So um, we'll see. If we are bearish below 3150s, I'll be watching for a potential drop into 3142, below that 3068, below that 3020. Wondering if the numbers are out for um for 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 Black Friday and also for uh not just Cyber Monday but almost Cyber Week because Amazon was pushing uh pushing heavy deals the entire the entire week uh first week of December. So we'll see if this is going to um, buy back up or if those numbers are already factored in and we're still seeing you know, a little bit of weakness in tech and if, if, if Amazon continues to, to sell. So we'll see how that, how that works out. But I'm watching the 3158-ish, 59-ish area to see if the buyers step in. If we gap below that going into the week, then that will be a level that I watch as an area where I know um, was pre a previous demand pocket that may now be a supply area where if we pull back into that, I'll see if we can buy above that. So above the 3158, 59 ish area, you want to keep an eye on the 3177s 
And then above that, you want to keep an eye on the 3194s. And then above that, you want to keep an eye on the 3205s. And then the 32, like 15s to 19s, then the 3223s on Amazon. Those are all interesting levels. So I want to see if this holds and if we buy back up. But we have not been bullish above the 3220s. That's something to remember, right? So until we get bullish above that, then all these uh, these pops may sell. So we'll see how this works if we're gapping down and we, if we or if we're selling and we see more downside action here. I would watch the 3142s again, and I would also watch the 3068s. Then I'd watch the 3020s, then potentially the 2950s. We'll see how this plays out headed into the end of the year. Um, Netflix was also interesting. If you remember, let me move this bad boy up, drag these candles out. What we mentioned on Netflix is that we would want to see um, bullish action above the 493. If the 493 breaks, let's watch for a push to 507. We got that, right? The 504, 507 area was hit. We stayed up there. We pull back. Every test, look at these, the, every test of 493 was bought right back up right so that was a great area to buy off of so what i'll be watching going into the going into this week is if we sell below the 493 and we are bearish below this level i will be shorting netflix so i'll be fading it into the 490s then into the 485s and seeing if the buyers step in there is definitely a demand pocket right around that 488 ish 487 ish area i'm not sure if that'll still be there right around this 490 ish area there is a demand pocket in there. We'll see if the buyers are still there when we go down. But below 493, I'm definitely fading Netflix, right? And I'll see how far we can go. But if we hold those 493s, we'll see if the buyers can give us a little bit of strength. And if we can run back up around the 507s, the 50, like we topped out around the 509s and then sort of we couldn't hold that level. But we do want to see bullish action above that for us to potentially test up into the the five fourteens and maybe even the five twenty nines. But first of all, before we could even talk about that level, we really need to see some strength off these four ninety threes and push back through the five oh fours and five oh sevens and see some strength up through here. We have no bullish action above the five oh sevens. We barely have any above the five oh fours. So we'll see how this works out if we're going to see some more weakness. But tech was definitely weak headed into the uh you know after Wednesday it was definitely weak, right? It just couldn't couldn't catch any 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 strength to the upside. So we'll see if that carries over into this week or if the buyers step in and hold specifically for um Netflix, this 493 area. To the downside, we definitely have the 490s, 485s, 475s, below that the 457s. Doubtful that we'd roll that heavy unless there was some type of news. Um to the upside we have 504, 507, 529, 535. Keep in mind that I believe California has put out a, um, a lockdown or shutdown order where they say roughly 75 to 80% of Californians will be um, on stay at home orders based on whatever the governor is saying. So we'll see how that may affect um, a ticker like Netflix, right? Um, Amazon that were considered uh, WFH work from home tickers. We'll see how that works out for uh, for those tickers if the if the desire is still there. Because what we have to remember is that there are vaccines on the horizon that are um, you know being being produced that have been fast tracked and approved by the FDA. So at what point do do those begin to um, become a a headwind? for some of these work from home tickers, right? At what point, at some point it will be, at some point it's going to be, hey, these vaccines are coming. So by the spring, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, the coronavirus will be not, you know, not such a big deal by then. So we'll see how that works out, what narratives the market may be pushing um, and how there may be, you know, just rotations out of specific tickers into other tickers as the expectation of maybe, people being back um, into the economy and um, soliciting at businesses, maybe the, the thoughts of restaurants opening back up, 
the thoughts of people getting back on airplanes, going back to Disney will create um, just a rotation out of uh, tickers that benefited from people being home to back to the tickers that benefit from people being back out um, in the economy and really, you know, uh, spending those dollars. Over to NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA was definitely interesting this, this past week. And what we want to watch for on NVIDIA, right? All the dips down here below the 531s, buyers stepped in. They gave us a little bit of upside action. But what we see is if you look to the left, look at these wicks. NVIDIA was not able to progress above that. So for me, I think what I'm going to do on NVIDIA is before I will be, um, let's see, where are we? I'll use this. I'm going to have to go back and probably fix this in the future. But right about this level on NVIDIA, right? Right around this 546-ish, 547-ish area. And I'll, I'll bounce this out later. Um, but I want to see bullish action above this area here. And we'll see if that continues, right? I, or if that happens. I want to see bullish, bullish action above, above that 546 50 546 90 ish area and if i see that then i'll be long to the 555s and maybe higher so we'll see how that plays out on nvidia um if we get down to the 531s i want to see bearish action below 531 to see if we get a dip into the 514s or at least a dip from the 531s into about the 525s 524s so we'll see how that works out on nvidia but to the upside on nvidia if we pop we have the 555 the 589s we do have some in between uh pockets of uh of supply so we had to be careful around the 566s maybe a little bit up around the 575s 578s watch that area if we go down, you can see that maybe there may be you know, a little bit of demand pockets in the 526s, 525s, but watch for a dip into the 514s. So I'll be watching um, NVIDIA to see how the week shakes out. Uh, keep an eye on, on just news and headlines just to see which way the market goes. Uh, people are mentioning things like CAT and Intel. I'll go to Intel that, you know, have been on a tear. So, you know, the, 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 the money in the market is moving to specific sectors that sometimes you don't expect, but it's still going there. So just follow the money. But a break above this 546.90, 547-ish area on NVIDIA, um, I'll definitely like to see bullish action above that if, if you want to get bullish on this. But below this, this little zone between the 546s and the 531s, we might ping around in there for a bit, but below 531, watch for a slight dip right watch to see if we can see the bears really sink their teeth and they give us a dip into the 514s or lower uh, microsoft didn't really move you know the way that we would expect this past week didn't really go too far the 214s, um, even though we saw the the uh, the dip down into that area, we saw no bearish action below. So I would like to see um, on Microsoft a break above 217.70, bullish above that. I'd keep an eye on the 221s. If we're bearish below this 213 area, look for a dip down around the 210s and potentially into the 208s on Microsoft. Facebook was interesting, definitely had news of uh, different state, state governors potentially uh, suing Facebook, all types of information on Facebook. Uh, it did tap our 291 area and just couldn't get above that. You know, we started to see the selling come in and it's at our 279 line. Now the 279 line for us on Facebook is what we call our swing door, meaning that below that we're a little bit more bearish, above that we're a little bit more bullish. So want to see if Facebook sells through that 279 area. And if it does, and we continue to the downside, then I'll be definitely watching for the 274s. 
um, maybe even down into the 269s and maybe to the 264s, though that would be really heavy if we got down there. The last time we pushed above 279 and we were bullish up, right? Meaning we pushed through the 291 area. When we sold back through, we broke the 279s and the extension took us down to the 264s. Will that happen this time? We don't have that ferocious sell side activity that we saw here back around the, um, what is this date? The 9th of November into the, um, yeah, 9th of November, all the way through to the, the 10th this selling activity is not as ferocious and what you'll see here look at these candles how they're like breaking how like a a wait the waves break on the shore break on the rocks look how it's stopping it's sort of slowing down as we get here around the 279s we'll see if the sellers or if the bears have the um the strength to push us down through and give us a little bit of sell side here or if the buyers step in and push us back up and kind of, you know, goes a little bit of sideways, a little bit of consolidation going on here. See if that happens. So I'll definitely be watching Facebook. Um, if the buyers step in, I'd watch for a pullback around the 281s, then potentially the 284s, 85s, and see if, see if that happens. If we continue to sell, already gave you those lower levels. But Facebook is interesting. Another interesting ticker is CRM. We saw this spill uh, post earnings. They also acquired Slack, I believe it is. And um, we kind of bounce off these 218s. We're going to see if we see bullish action back above the 229s. That would be nice. So keeping an eye on this, if we get above the 229s, look for a potential squeeze into the 242s. If we dip below the 218s, watch out for those 210s. We could go lower, but we'll see how that shakes out. Goose is another um, ticker that we liked. Um, we did like the movements on this. This is something that we were mentioning when it was down here in these lower levels. It is bought up way above. And so what we want to see on Goose is for there to be bullish action above this 3230s for a squeeze into the 3373s and maybe a run even higher. But the interesting thing on Goose that um, I think you sort of have to be careful of, right? I like to see patterns, see the... Um, higher lows and higher highs. So here was sort of the the buyback up, the reversal, as you can say, after we were selling out for a little bit. And this is the next dip. This is the next wave. And each successive wave, they're trying to push us higher. But now what you see is we have lower highs and we have to see if the buyers are gonna step in here or allow us to roll down into the 3028s. So we'll see if we get a demand demand above the uh, 3230s. What I would be watching for, if you look back at the, just that, the all the way back past actually, uh, Thanksgiving week, right? Look at the selling. You have minor pullbacks in here, but look at the look at the selling. Like each time you saw a pullback, it was fo it was followed by selling that gave us lower lows. So what you want to see is this is a pullback. The pattern says that we should see selling that gives us lower lows. If that doesn't happen and they reverse this pattern, we see buying and we see higher highs and we start to head back up to the 3373s. I'll definitely keep an eye on um, on Goose. It is winter, um, but not, not sure how this will project into the spring if... Um, what those sales would look like. So just watching to see if we get, a, you know, a three or four point pop out of Goose. But for me, before I do anything, I need to see a, a reversal of this selling that I'm seeing here. Cause it's seeing every time you see this little pullback, followed by selling, little pullback, followed by selling, little pullback. We'll see if the pattern continues and it continues to sell. I'm not going to grab this 
with the patterns being lower lows. It just doesn't make sense. So we'll see how Goose shakes out, but just something to have on your radar, something I think is a little bit interesting. CMG, it is above this um, line that we liked, this 1312s. We're slightly bullish above that. We'll see if the buyers squeeze us into the 1340s, 1348s. If we get above that, see how far we can go. Looks bullish to me, but we'll see. Um, what we mentioned, if you remember on CMG, we wanted to see if we can get above that. So we pushed above, pulled back, right around the 1296s, buyer stepped in, pushed us right back through the 1312s. So this looks pretty good. We want to see if we can continue through the 1348s. We want bullish action above this. What we don't want to see is what we saw here, right? What we pushed up near the 1348s. And then there's just some sell candles that took us back to the downside around, around the 1239. This is a long way. If you're in CMG, if you're not in shares, if you're trading options, it's spready. So you really want to, uh, depending on your time, your, your time horizon, if you're trying to get in and get out, if you're trying to day trade this, you really want to make sure that you're following the trend. So you want to make sure you, if it pulls back and you're getting in, that you have a clear area where you're getting out and a clear area where you'll be taking your profits. McDonald's. So what we were mentioning about McDonald's is on, um, let me get to it here, right? Would we hold these two 16s and buy back up? The answer, no. Instead, we sold all the way down to the 209s. We had buyers step in, push us back to the 213s. And now we may be about to make a lower low. So we'll see if the buyers are able to hold these 209s. If not, watch out for the 206s on McDonald's. If they hold the 209s, we a little bit of buy side or a little bit of buying. Watch for the 216.95s, the area of uh, you know strong supply where it may be difficult to get through. So we'll see if that is the case. And if we hold these 216.95s, meaning not bullish above that, then I'd be looking for, for us to retest the 21340s or even the 209s or even lower. But the way that this is looking, that back test in the 213s, 213.40s, buyers didn't pull us back above and give us a back test of the 216.95. There wasn't even enough strength to be able to get us back up there. So this right here is looking like a bear flag. So we'll see if this breaks and resolves to the downside and this opens up the 206s or potentially the uh, 201s. So I'll be definitely be watching McDonald's uh, this week to see where we go. Intel, off to the races. So if you're looking at Intel, this thing is ripping. I would keep my eye on if we pull back to the 5111s, if the buyers step in. If the buyers step in, then we want to see if we get a, a, a um, retest of this 5260 area and potentially a squeeze into the 5358s and maybe even 5571s. If we pull back to the 5111s and uh, the buyers don't step in, then I'll keep an eye out for this first hitch around the 4980s, I mean 4990s to 50. 5003s, 5005s. I'll watch that area. That's the first hitch. Or if we can drop down to the 4916s. But if this resolves the upside, if this breaks and continues to go to the 5358s, follow the trend. And maybe we see the 5571s as the area that we test. Dollar Tree trying to be, be bullish above the 111s. We'll see if this makes it up to the 115s. If not, and we pull back below the 111s, look for a potential dip into the 106s. The buyers did step in around the 108s before on this little dip. So that's an area that I would keep an eye on if you were short below the 111s, that the buyers could step in around 108 
If not, watch the 106s. So definitely keeping an eye on this. Why am I saying this? If you scroll back and you look above these 111s, what you've seen on these pops is that it's been followed by a little bit of sell side, right? Pop, followed by a little bit of sell side. Another pop above, followed by a little bit of sell side. Strong pop and break above all the way up here around the uh, 119s, almost the 120s, followed by sell side, buy back up, followed by a little bit. So these pushes above the 111s, um, so far, it seems as if the buyers don't have a strong appetite, right? So even though we pushed up here to the 119s, above the 111s, that was from about September the 10th all the way through so about a month of um action above this 111 in this uh this in this um i'll say this time frame here as far as how long we were up here so we'll see if this holds above the 111s if we squeeze or if we sell back below so this is interesting below the 111s i would definitely be looking for a little bit of um sell side maybe three or four bucks down maybe even more on dltr but just an interesting uh, setup here. We'll see if we continue to go up. ZM, interesting area. We're above the 401s. We, let's look at this, see what we've got going on. Four sixties, back up. Four thirty four, strong sell through. So we'll see how this. Mm, we'll see. We'll see how this how this resolves. So above the 401s, um, I would not short unless we're closer to the 424, which I think is an interesting area here, maybe even the 430s, but the 424s, that's the area that I will be watching um, if we push up. If not, if we get below 401s, I would keep an eye on this area right around these 395s where you see there's just so much uh, buying and selling here. Look look at this. Look at these candle wicks where the, the, the sellers were trying to go down here. The buyers just stepped in. And so you saw this little run that we had up into the 478, 480, 80 area right into earnings, right? So what I'll watch is see if we roll through here, but be careful with the, there are two different things or two different narratives at work. One narrative is that the vaccines are coming and headed into the spring. A lot of people will be vaccinated. A lot of frontline workers will be, will be back out into the economy and they'll be, um, be back at work. Right. And um, that's one narrative. A lot of vaccines coming out, you know, people no longer need to be at home. That's one narrative and that's headed into the spring. The other narrative is that post Thanksgiving, COVID numbers are spiking. So with those numbers spiking, many people for the Christmas season will be working from home. So they will be home. So technically there should be more users for ZM uh, for the winter. Right. So we have to see those are competing narratives where one narrative, remember, remember, the market is forward looking. Right. One narrative is that by the spring vaccines, people are back out um, going to businesses, back out into the economy, back to work. The other narrative is that right now, at this moment, the COVID numbers are through the roof. Uh, they've never been higher. Uh, people, you know, stay at home orders in California. People are fearful. People are not, you know, out to work. So those are two competing narratives. We'll see which one 
that is the most relevant for this week. And if the um, the case of the you know the vaccines and the forward looking um, uh, aspect of the market, if the people that are you know trading or investing in ZM subscribe to that theory, then we're going to go down. If they subscribe to, to the theory that hey, right now people are going to be staying home because of uh, the spike in COVID cases, then we may go up. So just keep an eye on that when it comes to ZM and look at these levels, the 401s, 395s are interesting, 375s. If we roll through 375s, keep your eye on the 346s to the upside. Keep an eye on the 424 to 426s and the 434s. And if we pop above here, then we just got a whole new ball game. You know, we could, you know, may get a run to the 460s. So we'll see. This is a super momentum stock. We'll see which way it goes. Goldman Sachs off to the races. We'll see if we continue to the upside. Financials have been squeezing. Uh, what we mentioned on Goldman Sachs is you wanted to watch if we can hold the upper 220s for a push up into the 235s. I believe that's what we mentioned in the last video. We did see a dip. We didn't quite get to the uh, 228s, but we did hold the 229s and the buyers stepped in and pushed us back up. This is looking super bullish. We'll see if we squeeze into the 243s. And um, that's really all I can say about uh, Goldman Sachs because financials are really strong right now. And maybe we see a run even higher, maybe 249s. We'll see how this works out, but we're bullish. It, like it's just looking like it's gonna squeeze. So we'll see if this continues um, into the upcoming week. Mm, no, that's long enough away, I have to worry about that. But we'll see how this works out. Um, these type of tickers that are overextended, I'm really careful and I do watch the uh, intraday for entries and I make sure I'm out uh, during that same day. So if I'm in, I'm not spending too much time, not swinging multiple days, some people will. For me, I just think the market right now, um, you know how people say things are overvalued or they're too expensive. The only thing that matters is based on your time horizon, right? Meaning how quickly you need to, um, I need a return on your investment when your options expire or whatever the, whatever that thing may be for you, um, that's what matters, right? So for you, if you can hold something longer, then pullbacks don't really don't really matter based on your plan. Um, for me, I just want to catch the pullback and ride the push. If it's three points, four points, five points, six points, 10 points, 15 points, 20 points, I'm good. I'm trying to be out that day because there's a lot going on as far as competing narratives and news as what's being pushed into the economy. Um, one president going out, another president coming in. You have um, just, just changes in the Fed. It's a lot going on where you don't want to get caught on the wrong side. So make sure that when you get into your trade and you're buying or you're selling, whichever way you're going, make sure you have in mind who are you selling to? Who's going to buy from you? Who are you giving it to? And if you have that in mind, meaning you have your profit take and you also have your stop loss or maximum risk levels, you'll be okay. So the thought that the market may be too high, that people are just too bullish, that this thing is gonna crash or whatever, whatever the thoughts are, that's not what's important. Stay focused on your time horizon. What's your plan? If this happens, then this. Make sure you have a plan of when you're gonna take profits or when you're gonna, you're, you're, you're going, to, um, going to scale out and also a plan on what's the maximum risk you're willing to take, right? And just keep your ears open to see if you receive any new information or new news that may, um, may cause or motivate you to adjust that plan uh, that you had in place. The spy is off and running. 
And if you're wondering where are my lines, there will be none. So um, not immediately because I'm more of a retracement trader. So when something is breaking out, either I will not trade it or if it's making, you know, it's going to levels that I have not uh, drawn, you know, supply demand lines, I'm going to be utilizing Elise's uh, pivots. So I'll be using those pivots to trade something where it's when it's going someplace where it's never gone before. So I feel like it's like a like Star Trek, but um, that's what I do, right? I use pivots with my intraday trading. I use pivots with my entries and exits, and I use these lines that are uh, definitely based on previous pivot levels. I use these lines to give me an overall direction on um, on specific tickers and setups that I like, right? So if it's above here. I may be more bullish based on the candle structure. If it's below here, I may be more bearish. But my my being bullish or my being bearish is only to my next supply demand level. Like that's it. If you uh, like this video, please don't hesitate to tap the like button. And if you would like to receive more videos like this or videos from Elisa, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Power of Pivots, where you can look forward to receiving more videos, either like this or videos from Elisa on pivot setups as she shows you how she utilizes her pivot strategy to get great entries on pre-market um, RTH and also after our entries on great tickers and swing plays. Thank you so much for your time. Remain safe. Have a wonderful week of trading.